What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another Eno Gaming video. Today, we got my boy, Mr. Insidious, or Ethan. And today, we're going to be talking about some good old-fashioned Spider-Man No Way Home. Spoiler, whatever the freak you want to call this. Spoiler review? Yeah, spoiler review. We're going to give it like that. So, yes, spoiler. We're going to talk this shit about this movie. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to let Ethan start Ethan, because... Ethan, 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 all three Spider-Mans are in the movie. Yeah, all three Spiders are in the movie. We're going to talk about that, too. But but we're going to let we're gonna let Ethan go into it a little bit first before I just start start talking real. I'm not even going to say I'm going to be talking real. I'm just going to say I'm going to be spitting a lot of stuff that could possibly happen because that movie set up a lot more than I thought I did when I first left out that theater. So I'm going to give it to you, Ethan. Okay, so... The movie itself, pretty good. Like, it's really, really good. Did it exceed my expectations? No. Did it beat my expectations? Yes. <clears throat> but, like, the one, like, one of the few moments in the movie that honestly felt forced, in my opinion, I mean, I ice cream as I do this. And you can hear me, right? Yeah, they should be able to hear you. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, um, one of the, one of the first few things that I really like, because I'm gonna go ahead and get the bad stuff out the way first, <clears throat> was the fact that Aunt May dies. Now Aunt May, uh, uh, that was the finest Aunt May we've ever. No doubt about it. <laughs> She's supposed to be old, and for some reason, this movie she looked like she was like in her thirties, and I was like, <laughs> but she died. Yeah, um, she got she gets killed by Green Goblin. And it teaches this little gay ass life lesson at the end of the movie where Toby Maguire, the king of all Spider Man, goes up to to Toby and is like, You need to be a real Spider Man and let it go. And he was like, No, we can't. And like, Violet solves nothing. And then basically, Aunt May tells Peter, the, you know, the trademark. Uh, the great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, yeah great power comes great responsibility. Also, also known as with great power comes great big booty bitches. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the, that was that felt forced because for some reason it was Aunt May that did it, and I just felt that was a little retarded. Because um, unlike all the other Spider-Man movies, uh, Spider-Man was first revealed in um, Avengers: uh, Civil War. And he was just, I, didn't, I never actually watched the movie. I just know that's when that one first appeared. Um, it, it's just really kind of stupid because, like, Uncle Ben is even a thing in that movie. And honestly, I don't really give a shit much about Aunt May than I did Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben was that, you know, responsible guy putting shit out for the family, trying to teach Peter Parker life lessons. And Aunt May is just like, Go be Spider Man and do some bullshit. Like, uh, it's just fucking retarded. <laughs> Did I mean, does that mean I, I didn't like a man as a character? No, she was cool. I just felt that it was forced to her to be like, a oh, great power comes great responsibility, so I can teach you the same gay ass fucking life lesson the third time in a row. They just made it worse this time than the other two times. Like, I forgot how they did it in Amazing Spider Man. Did Uncle Ben... Uncle Ben died in Amazing Spider-Man, the first one, right? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, Tom Holland literally just has to be built different and have Aunt May die, and it's just... I mean, it made me sad, but at the same time, I thought about it, and I was like, this feels so forced, though. Yeah. And then... Um, there's no, like, exciting new characters that weren't already shown in the trailers, I'll go ahead and tell you that, which... That would really say disappointed me, but I was kind of like maybe like maybe one secret character we didn't know about. But I guess the huge reveal was that all three Spider-Mans were in the movie, which I already knew that was going to happen. If that didn't happen, I probably would have just said, yeah, this movie's dog shit, don't watch it. Because it's just like every other Spider-Man movie at that point. Um, that's what legit, to me, made this movie so special, is that all three of my childhood Spider-Mans, especially Tobey Maguire, his old ass, in the movie... And it's funny as shit because, like, I was the first person to realize, uh, Andrew, like, in my movie theater, 
that um, when Andrew Garfield first comes to the scene because this little fat fucking Asian boy like makes a fucking portal because he's a fucking wizard now or something. You're dead, dead. And, like, and, like, <laughs> shit. and then he sees Spider-Man in the distance and then he's like, Spider-Man, come on, come on. And then like he's kind of just standing there in an alleyway and he starts like slowly running. And I was like, that is not Spider-Man. And then he jumps through and it's fucking Andrew. And I'm like, yeah. And everyone starts clapping and shit. And then Toby's weird ass. Whenever, because he does it again with the gay ass fucking finger motion. And he gets another Spider-Man. And it's Toby Maguire. And this dude's not even suited up. He just walks in like he just got out of church or some shit. And he's just like, hey, guys. Yeah. And, you know, he works suit, you know, under his fucking regular clothes i mean andrew andrew did too so i don't really understand why he didn't come in with clothes on and he came in with a suit on but you know that's whatever i don't get it all of them do it i mean peter i mean tom Holland kind of does it mostly just because his shit's he's a this is another thing i don't really like about tom holland's uh spider-man he is legit a mini iron boy that's really is he <laughs> iron man jr every fucking movie I've ever seen. <laughs> like, shut the fuck up. Oh my god. <laughs> like, when I know in Infinity War, everyone was so sad that when all those characters by Spencer Spider-Man, I legit laughed. Because I just see it's Mr. Stark. It was so good. And he just fucking dies and I'm just like, well, damn. <laughs> okay. Uh... But, like, there's not a single movie that Spider-Man's been in when he doesn't mention Tony for, like, 30 different times. I mean, besides the new one. Besides the new one. Besides the new one. No, he references him in the new one. They do? Oh, yeah, yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, that's right. I forgot, yeah. Which I kind of can't help it because that fat dude that has a crush on Aunt May. Yeah. Um, has, he's, like, tied to Stark Industries or whatever. Yeah. And I understand all this. It's just fucking annoying because literally everything in the Spider-Man universe that he has it's just legit from fucking Tony. And it's just kind of like, I know in the comments it was kind of like that too, but it wasn't so, like, he still was a little gay-ass fanboy for Iron Man. It was just like, hey, Iron Man, make some cool-ass fucking gear. And he's like, okay. I mean, I mean, I'll say this in the comic-wise, depending on which one you watch, I mean, read uh, the original comic line, uh, Peter Parker gets done pretty dirty by Iron Man, so I'm just going to skip that. And we're just going to go to the Ultimate Spider-Man comics where, you know, they work together to build the Iron Spider. Instead of in the MCU, he just builds it himself and gives it to Peter, which I thought was so freaking stupid. Because it makes it like Peter Parker is a moron or something, even though in No Way Home, it shows that every version of Peter Parker is normally a genius. So it's like, what's well, yeah, going on? All science for some reason. Yeah, they're all they're almost genius or smart or whatever. But, you know, that's... Yeah. I think Tom Holland's the dumbest one, though. And I think Andrew Garfield's the smartest one, and Tommy McGuire's just the best Spider-Man. Yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, I mean, Andrew Garfield's smart and all, but I feel like he was more of, like, a new smart. Yeah, my personal opinion, I think um, Andrew is... I mean, he, I, mean like, I mean, also think of it this way. Spider-Man and the first, you know, Tommy McGuire, he didn't even have to make you know, because his shit's, like, in his skin. Like, right? Yeah, yeah, he has, a uh, or, like, uh, whatever. Like, right it's called. In the original Spider-Man universe, like, in the comics, he didn't have to make web suspensions, right? No, he did. And he did? Yeah, he couldn't do that at first. Okay. Uh, that's why I say correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But that's the thing is about, um, Tobey Maguire, I mean, he didn't have to make that, but every single other one, they had to make it their own, so that's why I'm saying Tobey Maguire, I mean, I'm not saying Tobey Maguire couldn't do it, but he did. Yeah. I mean, there's not really a lot of bad stuff to say about the movie, honestly, that is just one of the big things for me, at least, and it had only if I'm nitpicking, it was just that it felt like the Aunt May death scene was just a little forced. And they were just trying to throw a life lesson in there, which they're trying to reinstate what every Spider-Man goes through, which is with great power comes great responsibility. But I don't know. I just feel like ever since I learned that Uncle Ben wasn't in the movie, I just kind of thought that was dumb. Um, but everyone has their own opinions. 
Okay, so since I've taken some time, you know, and enjoyed my last few days of uh, enjoying some Spider Man, uh, I'm just gonna tell Ethan this. I haven't mentioned this at all to him, but uh, I'm moving for TSM three, The Amazing Spider Man three. I hope uh, Andrew Garfield actually gets his third Spider Man movie. I know everybody's been pushing for that. I don't know how Ethan feels about that, but everybody's been pushing for that recently. So I hope he gets that. But this has nothing to do with that right now. Not not at this very moment. So going off what Ethan was just talking about with that scene in particular, I didn't realize a couple of things in the theater. I'm not going to lie. Aunt May really did hit me that hard. I'm just going to keep it 100 because they didn't really explain how she got hurt or whatever. So it kind of just milestoned it. It made it kind of feel kind of stupid. This is how she died. She was like, she was like, Beside that building and the Green Goblin, she's like, get shit on. He smashed through the building and the fucking, like, the Goblin Mobile, whatever the fuck that flying saucer yeah, is. Yeah, glider. Like, yeah, Goblin you know Glider. How, you know how, how it has the uh, the blade? Yeah. It stabbed her. Oh, that's what did it? I thought it was the bomb, but I you guess know, it wasn't. I'm going to go ahead and say this, too. Since it's fresh on my mind, now I'm going to let you have the entire floor. It's just a lot of things keep popping in my mind. Uh-huh. Um, it was whenever Spider-Man was fixing to kill the Green Goblin. And mm -hmm. I was like, legit. The, the, the one thing I don't really kind of like it, but like, I like the references that made the movie. I really do. But I'm like, whenever Spider-Man was fixing to kill Green Goblin, it was fixing to be the exact same way he died in the last movie. Just Spider-Man was actually doing it and not, you know, Green Goblin did it by an accident. Yeah. But I was just kind of like, and now I'm kind of confused because, you know, now that you think about it, literally everyone that had, that was bad, like all the bad guys and every single Spider-Man movie we've had are now good. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's, Besides that's how. Like Venom and a few other characters. Yeah, I mean, I was going to. I was just not thinking like. So how does that change the story now? You know, I was going to get to that eventually, but I guess you just opened that bag. So I'm going to go ahead and end my Aunt May bag real quick. Then we can get right to that. So the way I took the Aunt May thing was that it was kind of, I don't know, overrated at the time. Uh, Ethan kind of summed it up pretty well for how I felt about it as well. But what would really hit me, though, was like when I got off of the movie theater i got on the social media and i was actually allowed to see spoilers now and one thing that i'm pretty sure millions of people picked up that i didn't or maybe me and ethan didn't get is that although spidey tom holland spidey had been in multiple other movies when you get down to the nitty gritty this was all his origin story none of this stuff that he's done just because he was spider-man during all that time what I finally understood when I walked at that movie theater and I really just sit there and I really just started seeing other people's opinion is that whole movie was his origin story. I mean, because yeah, if I he... I realized they fucked up with the last two movies. They're like, damn, we really did not make an origin. We kind of just threw Spider-Man in here. And we're like, all right, let's revamp everything. Yeah, so like at the end of the movie, Spider-Man finally stops donning the Iron Spider. <laughs> He doesn't don the magic suit. He dons a regular Spider-Man costume. And, and it looks so good. Yeah, it looked amazing. And I was just like, wow. So they really did that. And another thing that I want to touch on before we get back to what Ethan was just talking about earlier is that I really liked the ending of this movie. I liked how it I really liked how they pushed Tom Holland Spider-Man to finally feel like Spider-Man, that he realizes that his choices affect other people now. It was a lot like Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Um, I'm sorry if I'm spoiling this for anybody, but you guys should probably know this already. Gwen Stacy gets killed because Peter can't make his mind up in The Amazing Spider-Man 2. And her death is kind of his fault. It, it's his fault entirely and can't really changed that it's his fault because he couldn't make his mind up he ignored his responsibilities and so because he kept deciding to go back to Gwen every single time and diverge off his true path he got her killed and basically it was all his fault the same thing now, with I, got a question. I got a question so 
And then other people may also be curious about this. So back to what I was saying earlier about like how, you know how I said that since all the characters were cured and they're sent back to the original timeline, do you think, let's say in Amazing Spider-Man's universe, do you think Gwen Stacy could be alive since basically none of the guys are bad anymore? So it has to rewrite some type of history in those, like, you know, in those uh, series, basically. Okay, on that, I actually will talk about TSAM, and I don't know if you want to talk about Spider-Man, but I'll hit at that. But honestly, um, I thought about it, and honestly, I don't think the Sam Rams movies actually changed that much, but I'll talk about that. But for the most part, I think that TSA, I think The Amazing Spider-Man is probably the more interesting side, but at the end of the day, I don't even think it's that big of a deal, but I do think it's a big change towards Gwen Stacy specifically. Because if you think about it clearly, it was Electro's fault that she got killed. But it really wasn't. So it's kind of hard. See, this is what I want to say happens. Is let's just let's just hit this movie all the way from the beginning. Let's go back to the Amazing Spider-Man 2. I don't know how much you remembered of it, but I've actually uh last few days I've rewatched the Sam Ramsey series completely. <laughs> And I've watched The Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2, so I'm like 100% here. I don't know about you, Ethan, but I'm like 100% here. Yeah, so, I, I don't know what happened first. Yeah, so uh, like I might, I might hit some things that you don't know. So basically what I'm going to say in the second movie, the more important part of it is basically the biggest part of it is Max Dillon and kind of getting to pretty much know him. So what I think in the first few minutes of the movie, like Gwen's speech, I think Peter Wills that now, honestly, I can't say that part specifically down because maybe because he doesn't see Max, maybe he doesn't talk to him or maybe since Max is good, he, I don't know, never talks to him or maybe the movie plays out the exact same. But like, it's, it's weird when I think about it. Cause it's like, if Max is see what I think happens now is when Max becomes Electro, he doesn't actually do bad things. He instead, I don't know, changes the ways he was doing it. Maybe he listens to the police. Maybe he chooses to use his powers for good. Maybe he doesn't get obsessed. Maybe he doesn't help Harry. I mean, honestly, any slip change that Electro makes affects Gwen's death. So let's say Electro, when Harry comes, decides, oh, I'm not going to help you like I did the first time. Or I don't know something. I don't. I don't really know what could change. But anything that he does that could change it would permanently change that. Because the whole point Gwen was there in that movie was literally because Peter kind of sucked in that movie. I'm not gonna lie, Andrew Garfield. You, you, you literally couldn't figure out how to stop your web shooters from getting destroyed. You couldn't. You, in fact, if Gwen wasn't there, you wouldn't even have won. You actually would have lost to Electro. So in theory she kind of had to be there but if electro is good in that and now he's not like that i honestly think she could still be alive i mean it's a lot of questions yeah it's a lot of what if there but i think she might still be alive it just all depends see what could happen is and this is what i think happened is they just wrote like electro out of the story now like the same story happened just with that electro like maybe harry still got gwen somehow and maybe he for some reason still i don't know threw her through the clock tower or something i don't know it's either a they completely changed the entire timeline or b it still happens just without electro being bad or something i don't know but either a she's alive or b she's dead that's the amazing spider-man now, i don't know if you want to talk about spider-man specifically but in spider-man honestly i can't really tell you differences like if doc ock is good then that means that the whole spider-man 2 movie basically pretty much won't happen simple as that if norman is cured then he'll never become the green goblin so harry will be more focused on i guess and i guess uh he'll never fight really the only important thing that will ever happen if all of them are good in that series is i don't know sandman coming to terms with killing spider-man's uncle but he did that at the end of the movie so i don't know i don't really think uh honestly if anything changes with them i think it just gives them a perfect clean time i mean, i don't think i don't think um I so forgot sandman shot him yeah i don't think norman's gonna 
I don't know. I don't think Orman's going to be bad. I think Norman's going to live. I think that gives him more time with Harry. I don't know. But at the same time, if that is how that works, then that also means Norman probably lost his company because I don't know if you remember this, but in the first movie, uh, basically the Green Goblin was pretty much killing everybody that was standing in Norman's way of keeping his fortune. So that was kind of what was going on. So I do think that maybe he would go broke without the Green Goblin. Personal opinion, I, I don't know. That that might have ruined more for Harry. So maybe it was good if he stayed good. I, that, I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. Or maybe he turns good at the last second. I don't know. It's weird. It's a what ifs. I don't know. But honestly, the Sam Ramsey movie, that isn't going to be a big change. The bigger change would be to the Amazing Spider-Man. And the funny part is about the Kirk Connors thing is like, he didn't die in the first movies. <laughs> he, was, he was still alive. So it was like, when he cured him, it was like, okay how are you in two places at once now it doesn't really make sense but okay so or maybe that is him just like i don't know i guess it kind of depends on what part of the movies they came from if that makes any sense what parts it would change like let's say it was like electro at like the last second when he was about to kill peter let's say that's what it was like honestly if that was that max and he comes back good I'm not going to lie. That's not going to change anything. I feel like Gwen's still going to... I feel like uh, Gwen's still going to die if that's where that Electro came from. Specifically Electro. It really... The Gwen thing is kind of dependent on Electro because it, you can't really change what will happen to Gwen unless Harry was affected, which he wasn't really affected because he wasn't in the... You know, he wasn't in the movie. So it was like, you can't really argue much for him. So... They kind of did it where it's like it really just depends on where Electro is. I mean, things in the movie would play differently depending all on him, considering he was a core character. But I don't know. That's just how that goes. So I don't know how you feel about Gwen, but I don't know. She might be alive. She might not. What do you think? Uh, like you said, um, it really just kind of depends on Electro's stance and if Harry actually, you know, is still like, I guess, uh throws it to the clock tower or whatever. But here's another point uh, I want to move on to. It's the post credit scene. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, Venom uh, leads a piece. Now, I also want to talk about something else, but we can, we can talk about that first, actually. It, it kind of goes into the next part. So the first thing I want to talk about is that it's official that MJ is now in the MCU, right? Okay, MJ is in the MCU. So... But I think is next, and what I want to specifically state is that I told Ethan that I think we're going to see Venom versus Spider-Man next. Honestly, I don't think that's coming next. I think that's going to be a long time away now. I don't even think that might be third. There might be the third Spider-Man trilogy movie, to be honest with you. I doubt that's well, next. I feel like that movie's not probably going to come out until like 2024 three. Yeah, like I feel like that it's movie's far away. going to make the new Doctor Strange movie. Yeah, uh, the thing about that is is that I don't know when the next Spider-Man movie is even coming out, so that kind of all depends on that, but I definitely don't think that uh, Venom is coming for a while. Now, basically, the hive mind is the reason for why Venom um, knew Spider-Man slightly or had some feelings about him when he appeared in the No Way Home MCU universe, and basically, that little piece that he leaves behind will go find spider-man and that's because of the hive mind and basically no matter what reality they're in they're like through that they know that there was a symbiote that knew spider-man so that that symbiote's gonna go find peter it'll happen he'll he'll find him but like the thing is is that we probably won't see a venom spidey for a long time because if he's just there in the next movie do you know how far he just went to get to him i mean i don't doubt he could it's a symbiote but like and he's done way more than that to get the Spider-Man. But it's just really crazy how you could write that. I mean, like, I that's... I mean, you would say that a spider, say Spider-Man had to go somewhere that was near where the symbiote was. Because the symbiote was only in Mexico. Yeah, I know. But, like, the it's far. But, I mean, I guess you could write it like that. But, I, I mean, mean, it could get stuck to a car or it could, like, you know. Yeah. Now, I don't know how far the next movie is going to be. I feel like the next, it's guaranteed, the next Spider-Man movie is 
gonna have a Venom Spider-Man. It's going to. I hope it does, but uh, I feel like the next Spider-Man movie now, I want to talk about this because this is super, like, deep Spidey stuff. So, we were literally just talking about Gwen Stacy, so I feel like this isn't that far off the conversation head. Now, the funny part about this is how we were literally just talking about it because I honestly didn't know this, but somebody brought it to my attention that apparently Gwen Stacy was already in the MCU and I didn't notice this but there was actually a girl in Peter's school that looked very resembling to Gwen Stacy now I'm not saying but this is basically what I think Marvel might do in the next movie I think we're booting MJ out I'm not saying that's canon or not but I'm saying that I think we're pushing Gwen in because honestly there's literally no reason after the ending of that movie that Gwen couldn't come into the movie there's also no reason why I guess you could say Liz doesn't come back or there's really no question if MJ just doesn't come back. I mean, I doubt they won't be in the next movie. I just think that Gwen might be coming to the MCU. So basically what that means is that we can expect George Stacy and we can also expect another villain that just comes kind of with her whole character. And I and I um I don't know if Ethan knows what character I'm talking about, but, you know. Um, one thing is like how like how you're talking about the origin story because I kind of want to go back to that. Um, it's kind of crazy because uh, there's so much possibilities now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's like, why I brought Grant Stacy up because yeah. I was like, yeah, she might, you know, pop up. Who knows? Like, it's, it's, well, I'm talking also about like reoccurring characters. Yeah, like, like we might see a new Green Goblin. We might see all this other stuff. Like we might see a new everything. Like. <laughs> Like, you like how I said whenever I was upset, whenever Carnage died and Venom vs. Carnage. Yeah, we could see a new Carnage. Yeah, it's it. possible. We could see a new Carnage. Yeah, we could. I mean, Cletus Cassidy probably exists. Yeah, I mean. Dude, I know there's something about uh, Venom vs. Carnage, but uh, I just have to bring this up because Carnage in um, Venom vs. Carnage, he was a badass. He was cool and all, but I just wish his voice was different that's the only that's the only thing i have to say about that yeah voice okay voice yeah i can agree with you on that one and uh all that but that also means that okay so there's this fan theory going around that one to hit real quick uh getting out of all the waifu talk and all that nonsense okay the next villain that's probably gonna be in this next movie is probably going to be uh you guys know him you guys love him you guys might hate him i actually don't care because i think this villain is stupid and retarded is the scorpion and before ethan gets on my head for saying this there's proof behind it j jonah jameson hates spider-man and i don't know if ethan knows this but in the 90s animated cartoon trust me you we can go watch it right after this if you want it <laughs> there's actually in literally the second episode of the series it gives us the actual origin of what happened in the comic books which is basically um, basically, J. Jonah Jameson hates Spider-Man and wants to catch him uh, so bad that he basically gets this guy whose name I can't freaking remember to save my life, um, Gorgol, Gar, whatever the freak that guy's name is. And basically, he pays money to make him the, uh, the Scorpion to hunt Spider because apparently in the wild, Scorpions are like the natural predator of spiders, right, Ethan? So basically, and, it shit. and then basically everybody's saying because Jay Jonah was such an important role in the last movie that he'll come back and Scorpion it could just be his villain. But in my Scorpion personal, yeah, but in my opinion, there are like multiple other villains. I mean, there's tons like Spider-Man has probably the highest villain roster in the entire comic book history. Like he has villains with other characters. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like he has like one of the biggest. Honestly, we could be seeing Kingpin. We could be seeing Tombstone. We could be seeing tons of people up here. I mean, uh, we didn't even get a Rhino touch-up. I mean, we could see a new Rhino. We could see a lot of stuff. That hopefully... I think. Um, I feel like the next movie, if it does go by what you're saying about James Joe Jameson and stuff like that, I feel like this is what the new plot could be. So it'll be, you know, Spider-Man. He's, you know, doing Spider-Man things, saving people, being the neighborhood, friendly Spider-Man, whatever, that trademark shit. And he stumbles across, and he, he, he say if he fights Scorpion. Yeah. And he's kind of getting his ass beat or something. And then he's like, ah, shit. And then, like, something happens where they both get separated. 
And then Spider-Man's kind of thinking, he's just like, man, I was just getting my ass kicked. What's wrong with me? And then he finds Symbiote, Venom. And he's like, hey, what the hell is this? And it gets on him. He's like, oh, this is fucking awesome. This suit's cool. And he starts beating Scorpion's ass. But then he kind of starts progressively realizing and becoming more malicious. And then it'll turn in from a Scorpion versus Venom movie to... Not Scorpion versus Venom. I don't know what the hell I got that from. Scorpion versus Spider Man to a Venom versus Spider Man. Okay, so the thing I want to talk about that real quick is that uh, Sam Ramsey himself stated that Spider Man Three was horrible, and I just want to talk about that real quick. First of all, they introduced too many characters. Uh, first of all, they introduced Eddie Brock in like one movie, Retards. They introduced freaking. <laughs> I don't know why they introduced all of these. I only like it as a child. Yeah, I have no clue why they they introduced all of these characters. First of all, my first problem with it when I watched it is that the symbiote came out of nowhere. Like, it just comes out of an asteroid for some stupid reason. The next thing right after that is they... Oh, isn't that what happened in the comics? And then it comes from an asteroid? No, what happens is uh, J. Jonah Jameson's son actually goes to... You know how he's a spaceman, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he brings it on the spaceship back with him, and he tries to take over him when he's... uh, And basically, Spider-Man yeah, goes to save him. him. Yeah, Spider-Man yeah, goes to save him, and then when he goes to save him, the symbiote a little bit gets on him, and then he tries to take over him, and well, blah, blah, blah. There, you should know the rest, yeah. And also yeah. the crap. So anyways, basically what happens in the movie is she just comes from a freaking asteroid that makes no logical freaking sense somehow attaches himself to Peter's bike, because why not? Why does it have to be Peter's bike? Of course it freaking is. Next thing we know, we freaking ain't seeing the symbiote for like freaking an uh, hour or two. So the next thing that happens in the movie is they introduce Eddie Brock. Then after that, <laughs> funny enough, this character just keeps coming back up for some reason in this video. Gwen Stacy out of nowhere just appears now in the uh, Sam Ramsey movie somehow. I don't know how to freak that happened. But I guess they were just like, oh, let's introduce her now. That's that's great. Let's just keep introducing comic book characters because they love doing this. Wait, she was just introduced in Spider-Man 3? Yeah, she was in that movie too. I'm dead serious. I mean, I knew she was in that movie, but I didn't know she was introduced yet. Yes, yeah, she was literally was introduced in the same movie. Right after that, yeah. they decide that it's a good idea to introduce Sandman to the story. Oh, wait, wait, we're not done just yet. Now we're going to introduce Venom to the story on top of all of that. And, oh, and we're freaking sitting over here with the four new characters that were never in the Spider-Man Sam Ramsey and movie. Back in Goblin. Oh, yeah, and then I forgot about that. We got the Harry versus Spider-Man stuff going on. So let me explain to you how this movie should have been done, in my personal opinion, but I'm really not here to talk about that. It's really a no way, Holmes. Review, we're kind of going on track here, but <laughs> okay, look. First of all, first first things first. I don't understand why they decided to put so many people in here. Honestly, let me give it to you straight. They could have kept Gwen Stacy out. She shouldn't have been in there. Honestly, she literally served no purpose but to just make MJ jealous for some reason. I don't get that. That was stupid. That's not how that should have worked. Roles were reversed. But right after that, they decide that it's a good idea to bring Sandman in and make him kill Uncle Ben, retarded. That's stupid. You need to get yeah, I slapped. That was kind of goofy. Like, I completely forgot that happened. Yeah, right after this, uh, somehow he just pulled the trigger. Okay, forget it. I'm not here to talk about that. Next thing they decide to do is make Venom a symbiote take over Peter, and now he's acting all bad or whatever, and whatever, slaps him. Yeah, I thought that shit was funny. Like, Bully Maguire? Yeah, Maguire. yeah, Bully Maguire. I love it, but, like, right after that, this dude just slaps MJ and and I'm like, well, now you're just turning into a freaking asshole. Uh, now, you're just, now you're just an asshole. Yeah, I'm like, you're, just kick, you're beating your girlfriend that probably still likes you or whatever. And now you're talking to all these other girls. Anyways, right after this, we decide that we're going to introduce Venom on top of Sandman. So now Sandman and Venom are double teaming him. Now Harry is helping him. Oh, yeah. Did we forget about the part where Harry fought him in the movie? Like, pretty much, they just tried to do too much in one movie. There was also even oh, yeah, a scene. Like, the legit, like, first few scenes is like they start fighting and then fucking yeah and then harry gets a freaking concussion i'm like what's going on <laughs> yeah and then he kind of forgets what doesn't he forget kind of what yeah happened? he forgets everything that happens for a short time until i don't remember when uh mj comes over and starts cheating with him and whatever and um all that other garbage next yeah, thing 
just like, well, this isn't, I don't think this happened in the comics. No, or... it definitely did. I mean, Gwen did date him in the comics, but that doesn't have anything to do with what we're talking about. Well, I mean, I mean, not Gwen, my, not Gwen, I mean MJ, 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 my bad, MJ, MJ dated her. MJ dated him in the comics, my bad. Actually, every girl that we're talking about Spider-Man being with actually has dated Harry. I, I don't understand how that works. Anyways, <laughs> literally not at all. But anyways, that happens. And basically, I don't know, Peter being crazy just decides to attack him. Also, the symbiote doesn't make sense in this movie. I don't understand why it was a costume. It's literally an alien thing. So I don't know why that was a thing. They literally didn't match up at all to me. It was really stupid. Oh, no, it wasn't a costume when he came to Eddie Brock. I mean, no, but it was a costume when it came to Peter. Like, did you see him taking it off like it was a freaking costume and putting it in a freaking a freaking treasure box and deciding when he wants to put it on or not? Like, what kind of garbage is that? Well, it may have been, well, it may have been because the symbiote was latched to his original suit. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, the suit was literally there, and the symbiote literally looked like the suit. But we all know the symbiote is not the suit. Like, literally, the real suit you can see hanging up, and Peter yeah, has a choice. To... You actually can see the real suit hanging up. Yeah, you. it's like you can, like, he literally has a choice if he wants to pick the black suit or the regular suit. And I'm like, why is that a choice? That's not how it works. Yeah, that's and, kind of weird. Yeah, that's really <laughs> stupid. Like, it, it's just really dumb. It's just really stupid. Anyways, moving on for the Sam Ramsey movies, back to No Way Home. I do like how um, Andrew Garfield finally gets his redemption there. Uh, that was a good part. Um, also, we got to see Daredevil in the movie. I'll just move on to that because I feel oh, like that was a big... like five seconds. Yeah, but like I was the one that told Ethan. So, yeah, y'all can thank me for that. I was the one that brought that up first. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh no! Look, like you, you know, you're a true Marvel fan when you catch the reference too, because like me and my children both, as soon as we saw him, we saw he was blind. Like, oh, yeah, look, that's Daredevil. And yeah. then he caught something because some came flying through the window. Yeah, a break that somebody Jared threw. Just, um, just, uh, I'm a therapist. Or no, I'm an attorney. That's what he said. <laughs> no, he knows what he said. He said I'm a really good lawyer. Peter was like, "How did you do that?" He's like, "I'm a really good lawyer." And I was like, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's kind of confirmed at this point that Charlie Cox is probably going to be a daredevil for the MCU at this point, but, you know, that's just my opinion or whatever. I also hope that the Kingpin will hopefully, um, you know, appear. Um, I want to say something else real quick about the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Uh, apparently somebody stated that maybe Venom's, uh, Venom, you know, from the movies, Carnage and all that, Yep. That he's actually in um what's his um name? Andrew Garfield Spider Man's universe or whatever. And I was like, if that's actually true, that would be so amazing. Because if that's if that actually is true, then that could mean that we're looking at a freaking Sinister Sticks appearance in a completely different Spider Man universe. Like, well, if that's the case, then why haven't we seen Spider Man yet in that universe then? I mean, Andrew Garfield makes a good case, like, why we haven't. I mean, he even says in the movie, he's like, well, after Gwen died, I mean, you know, I tried to keep going and all that other stuff. But after a while, I got bitter and all this other stuff. And I kind of couldn't do the job anymore. He kind of just says, like, without Gwen, he kind of just couldn't do the job anymore. He got too, he started, he stopped pulling his punches or whatever. And then he realized he was taking it too far or whatever, I guess. And maybe just stopped being Spider-Man, so... Yeah, I guess he just stopped being Spider-Man. I don't know. So that could play into why. I mean, he still hasn't fought an alien, so the symbiote hasn't appeared on his planet yet. So that could be an arguable, you know, thing, you know, you could do. I mean, you could argue uh, that. Although at the same time, I find it really stupid how that works because if Marvel does make The Amazing Spider-Man 3, which I hope they do, it's a big plot hole now because if that is the case, will it be after that? like no way home appearance because if it is then that would mean that i don't know he would have to fight the sinister sticks which doesn't make sense because at the end of the amazing spider-man 2 they were setting up the sinister sticks i don't know if you remember that that they were setting up the sinister six but then they just flopped yeah and then they and then they just didn't continue his series so i i think that was really stupid i mean a lot of people were looking forward to a sinister six appearance i mean it did appear in no way home but Venom uh, didn't ever, but Venom never appeared. Uh, but he actually was the sixth member, though. He just never did anything. Besides leaving a little bit of symbiote. And that was kind of it. 
I mean, well, you can't forget about chameleon either. Huh? You can't forget about chameleon either. Chameleon? Wait, what? He's on Sinister Six. Not chameleon. I mean, yeah, but wait, chameleon? You told me chameleon was in Sinister yeah, Six. Yeah, I'm trying chameleon. to make sure his name is actually the freaking chameleon. I feel like I'm being a. I don't know why that sounds wrong, but I'm pretty sure his name is the chameleon. You're probably right. It just sounds weird. Sounds weird. Yeah, okay, no, I don't know why this no, sounds weird. Does that sound weird to you or is that just me? Yeah, does that sound weird to you or is that just me, Chameleon? I don't know why. Yeah, it actually does, but I'm almost 300% sure that's his name, though. I don't know why, but that sounds so weird. I'm going to strike fear in the heart of my enemies with my name. The chameleon. You're probably just gonna be confuse people more than anything. I mean, that's kind of his whole thing is to change his face. So you, you're not wrong. I mean, you're kind of right. I mean, but like, there's tons of Spidey lore. I mean, um, I want to say we covered everything. I mean, we covered a lot. I mean, unless I was there's you know, one more point. Well, not really a point, but just kind of a thing I thought was kind of stupid. Tony yeah. gets randomly stabbed by Green Goblin for no reason. I thought that was kind of retarded. I mean, it was kind of not for no reason. It kind of made sense. He was like, Peter, don't do this. And then, like, he gets stabbed. And I was just like, what? Like, I don't know. Like, that was kind of stupid. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Like, that was just like, well, if Toby dies, I'm not watching Spider Man no more. He doesn't, but. I mean, it wouldn't matter. I mean, this is probably going to be the last time Toby even appears as Spider Man to begin yeah, with. Yeah, but then he dies, gay shit like that, because Toby wants to be a pussy and not. Be a real Spider-Man until two movies later. I mean, yeah, but it's just like, you know, it's just kind of what up. It's kind of what up. But, like, the thing about that whole scene was it's kind of just like, I don't know. It was kind of the, I don't know. It was really, really kind of stupid. I mean, with Spider-Sense, that doesn't really make sense. But we're just going to pretend like Spider-Sense doesn't exist for that one moment, I guess, because Toby was super focused on Tom or oh something. God. I'm confused about this now. So, you know how in, you know, all the other Spider-Man movies, whenever, you know, it was Uncle Ben that died, right? Yeah. And Spider and Peter Parker would just live with Aunt May. Well, in this universe, there was never an Uncle Ben, and Aunt May's dead. So where the hell is Peter staying at now, unless he's staying by himself? Okay, so first of all, I want to clear that up real quick. Actually, it's been confirmed that Uncle Ben probably did exist. It's just that this Uncle Ben died either a really early age for Peter that he really didn't, he wasn't Spider-Man. It was either, because there are signs that he exists. Uh, he he had his book bag in a previous movie and a lot of other things. To, a lot of things didn't exist, but like. Yeah, it's like he life. didn't, he must have died at a very young age for him because Aunt May doesn't even talk about him that often. So it had to have been like that. Uh, to push what you just said, though, actually, Peter gets an apartment at the end of the movie. I don't, uh, you obviously forgot that, but he was staying in a little apartment, and pretty much, I think it was the same apartment that him and his Aunt May stayed at before, but because she's dead now, there's nobody that knows Peter Parker. Or he's just staying in the same apartment that Aunt May is. He's just not himself now. Yeah, and now he's there by... He started, like, heating up food in a microwave or some shit. And like, it... Yeah, and uh, that was actually pretty brutal and pretty sad that um this Spider-Man actually doesn't have anyone anymore because it was always... In the, in the comics, it was always... It was always Aunt May. He always had Aunt May or Mary Jane or somebody he could always go to. Or... talking about comics until Aunt May died and they made the worst fucking spider-man story of all time because he makes a deal with the devil in that fucking story yeah so yeah it's pretty it was pretty tragic in that movie to be honest they kind of <sighs> not that ripped it off but they kind of implied that from like the no way home was actually implied from that comic because in civil war that's how peter got his identity revealed originally he got revealed in civil war because spider-man was like hey Join our side, and he was talking about Iron Man side on the Civil War. Yeah, and which then, was one of the first times Iron Man held him, which is what I was talking about earlier. But we can keep going. Yeah, and then um, so he, you know, since everyone knows about his identity, Kingpin, I think, sends an assassin down, kills Aunt May, and then Spider Man's like, so he talks to Mephisto. And he's like, I'll sacrifice my love for Mary Jane and my unborn child to bring back, uh, uh, to bring back, uh, Aunt May. And I 
think he also says to make everyone forget he's Spider-Man. I don't know about that one. No, that was Doctor Strange somehow able to pull that off using dark magic or something afterwards. I don't know why that was the case, but it was or whatever. So, yeah. And yes, that was based off that comic, but like it, it was done 20 times different. And better. Yeah, so actually, I'm trying to go through the entire movie, and besides fighting the villains, uh, the Spidey sense, uh, they did the meme twice. I don't know if you caught it, but they did the meme where they're all pointing at each other from that comic book looking strip like twice, and I really enjoyed that. Uh, they had a bunch yeah. of... Huh? Uh, I think I was just so amazed that I just didn't notice it. Yeah, but they did, like, twice. That's fucking funny. Yeah, they did it twice. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I mean, there was a great talk between all three of them. Um, That pretty much what that talk was is, like, how uh Tobey Maguire shoots webs and, you know, and they all just were, like, really concerned for him. And then uh, one of the funniest moments in the entire movie for me, I don't know about Ethan, was when... um. Tom Holland, Spider-Man says, uh, I was in the Avengers and, uh, everybody was like, oh yeah, you're in the Avengers. And then he was like, and then Toby was like, tell me what that is. And then, and then, uh, Andrew was like, uh, are you in a band? <laughs> I was like, I was like so gone when they said that that stuff was so freaking funny. Like, yeah. Like I was, I was so dead, bro. Like that was one of the highlights of the movie. That was so freaking funny. That was like, that was like Peter Parker meets Peter Parker meets Peter Parker. Excellent joke, bro. Like that was incredible. Like I love that. That was amazing. But other than that, I honestly think that was pretty much the entire movie covered. I don't really think there was anything that was left out. I mean, all the villains get cured in the end, but you already knew that because you shouldn't be watching this unless you actually watch the movie. Because I'm obviously gonna have it in the title. But this is a spoiler. Uh, yeah, you def if you haven't watched the movie you're watching this, just because, say, you weren't playing on seeing theaters and you just wanted to see what happened, I still definitely recommend you watch the movie. Yeah, like, uh, we probably should did that at the beginning of this. Stuff. Yeah, we really should really should have said that at the beginning but i might edit it in that at, at the beginning of this of this actually I so mean, you could like make like a disclaimer and be like hey if you have it, this contains spoilers definitely watch if you haven't already um, then you'll roll the intro yeah but um i don't know there i don't know i'm trying to think of that every i mean i know that was the entire movie there was no there was nothing wrong we put over the entire movie I'm just trying to make sure that I talked about everything that could be coming in the future because uh, there's tons. Uh, one of my theories was actually pretty good and that they might, because they brought Thanos' brother into the MCU, they might even go as far as to bring Madam Web into the MCU. And maybe not even just Madam Web, they might bring, I can't think of his name, oh my gosh, what is his name? Hey, this is, uh completely off topic but Deadpool 3 has been confirmed so excited about that yeah I feel that I can understand that Deadpool 3 but um I don't I don't I don't know if you know who I'm talking about or not I really don't but like uh he's well, he's you you know who I'm talking about right probably I can't think of his name uh I know you might not know Madam Web I get that one but like uh I can't think of the other one. Oh my gosh I know, I know somebody knows what I'm talking about if they've seen the 90s cartoon. I know exactly. They know exactly what I'm talking about. I can't think of their freaking name. Don't save my life. He's yeah, literally... Mm -hmm. But he might he might be coming to the MCU, maybe. Just because they put his brother in there. Honestly, Marvel can do anything they want. Anybody can be in here or whatever. I don't know. But anyways, yeah, I think we covered everything. Um, I don't think there's really anything else to talk about besides there might be a new Carnage coming. Who knows? It might be, uh, you know, all that stuff. Ethan, or anything else you want to talk about, or did we cover everything, or what? This is a little off topic, but I hope for if they do make a Venom three, I hope the new symbiote's gonna be toxic. That's about it. Yep. Uh, well, um, we'll catch you guys on the next season game video. Thanks for tuning in. Please for be sure to follow Ethan on all his social medias. He's a active member of the channel. And all that good um, stuff. And um, follow all my social medias. Follow all Darius' social medias. We'll catch you guys in the video. 
if you're tuning in if you're a marvel fan please say it in the description below deuces anything you got to say before we leave ethan you said description below you meant comments below yeah that's great thanks comments below <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, okay. Comments below. Okay. But yeah, definitely watch the movie, guys. And we'll see you on the next one. See yeah, ya. Yeah, deuces. All right, guys.